So over the years, I've gotten fairly comfortable with uh, positioning elements using relative and absolute positioning and even fixed positioning. Uh, but for the most part, those elements are positioned in a predictable manner, meaning that when I design the application, I can figure out where the positions are and I don't have to worry about it at runtime. What I'm not very confident in is positioning things at runtime based on dynamic uh, association. So for example, um, what I want to do here is be able to outline elements as I select them in the page. So here I've selected the paragraph and you can see the paragraphs outlined. Here you can see that the outline follows my selections as I click down through the various parts of the application. Right. Um, as I continue to click within a local branch of the DOM tree, notice that the selection is continuing to expand. Essentially we're walking up the DOM tree, getting uh, additional get bounding client rect information. And, uh, and this, this is inspired by a, a tool called Inspect that we've built here at Envision. And Inspect is far more complicated than anything I could build. This was just a fun Friday code cotta to help me get more comfortable with this concept of sort of dynamic runtime positioning. Um, and you can see we have the red outline, then we have these guides which show you how far away this particular outline is from the edges of the viewport, which is exactly what get bounding client rect does for us as it tells us the position relative to the viewport. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Um, ultimately, there's not a whole lot that's going on here. It's basically a, a glorified call to get bounding client rect uh, based on the user selection, which we then use to populate this overlay hash, which just has a couple of properties, which then turn around and pipe back into this app overlay component, which is really just a glorified CSS with position fixed. Um, but, let's, but let's walk through it quickly. So we have our document click, which calls this handle click event. And the handle click event um, has this tracer class, which I'll show you in a second. But essentially we're just getting the next target from the event. And if we jump down to get next target, what you can see is that we're getting the target of the event and then we're walking up the DOM tree looking for the next element or we're moving to a different element. This logic's not terribly exciting. Um, I'm just trying to show you that there's not really a whole lot going on here, right? This is pretty much the breadth of the code. Um, this tracer class is so you can see in the elements panel how I'm actually walking up the DOM tree. So if I open up the elements here and let's expand all these things. And so for example, let's go down here. You can see that, um, oh, I think that my state got messed up. Let's look here, if we can click. You can see that as heck is the target element as that I click again, you can see that it moves up to the TD. And then if I click again, it moves up to the TR and the table and so on and so forth up to the app demo and then up to the app root, and then the body class, and then the HTML. So that's just showing the way that we're walking up the DOM tree. Again, not terribly exciting. Um, if we take a quick look at what the overlay is doing, you can see that I'm feeding in that height, left, top, and width of that get bounding rect, and that comes into here. Uh, in my ng on changes, I'm just taking that um, those dimensions and I'm using the client width and client height, which is the size of the viewport. And I'm essentially turning those box coordinates into fixed coordinates, primarily so I can get the right and the bottom as well. And then all of these just pipe into some CSS properties of these various elements, right? Here's the outline. And then here are the, uh, the four guidelines. Uh, this is basically just a, a lot of CSS, no actual real logic going on here. And, and that's basically it. Um, so again, just a fun Friday code kata. Uh, this is my attempt to kind of work my muscles here around the get bounding client rec method so that I can become more comfortable with it, more familiar. And um, really this is all building up to a, a subsequent post, which I haven't even begun yet, uh, which begins to explore get bounding client rec in a, a more practical application inside of an Angular app.